in South Africa and an extremely warm welcome to you this afternoon on Afternoon Express. My name's Jeannie D and I'd just love to welcome back the Yay! gorgeous Bonnie and Bully from trekking across the US across of A. Across the Americas. I had so much oh. fun, but I'm so glad to be back. Yeah. And today's such an exciting day because yes. we are interviewing my bestie. I know! My bestie. <laughs> she's not only one of the most influential musicians in the world. She's, she's amazing. Bestie. She's amazing. And she's just so ridiculously stylish. She's sexy. She's funny. It is... Candy Swamazwa! <laughs> <laughs> now, I can imagine you were having such an amazing time in the States. And I just want to know, does anyone that lives in America think that Donald Trump is going to be president? You know what? Americans are horrified. At yeah. Donald Trump, like yeah. I was, I was actually just relieved to know that everybody was seeing and witnessing what we were witnessing. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know that what's trending at the moment. I mean, it's all over the internet. Is uh, Melanie Trump made a speech <laughs> and basically plagiarized an entire speech that <laughs> Michelle Obama did eight years ago? Yeah. Like copied yeah. the whole thing. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Did oh. you see that meme of of um, her holding up a, a poster saying hashtag Bring My Speech Back? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Shame. But also, I'm so sorry for Melanie. <laughs> she reminds me a lot of myself. We both have disgusting taste in men. <laughs> and also, Charlize Theron gave an outstanding speech at the World AIDS Conference in Durban. Yeah, she's Everyone's amazing. been talking about that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's happening on the show today? Well, what are we discussing with your bestie? Well, to kick off our show, we're joined by her, obviously, the most influential musician from South Africa with a global reach. She's a multi award winning artist. She's fronted the legendary group Bonga Muffin and collaborated with a number of other legendary artists, both locally and internationally. A musical force to be reckoned with. And of course, today we are live. So please give us a call to chat to Tandriswa. Otherwise, go onto our Twitter, which is at Afternoon Chat, using our hashtag Afternoon Express, or go onto our Facebook page and send her all of the questions that you want. And we are live, so you can give us a call on 083 913 3728. I can't even remember my own phone number. I'm amazed <laughs> that I can do that. And there's also lots of other exciting stuff on the show. I went dining in the sky. Oh, I'm yeah. dying to see that. Yeah. Also, on Winner Home, we're going to be chatting to a finance expert who's going to help us to how to get to, how to apply for a bond. And we're going to be checking in with our design contestants to see what's going to be happening with the kitchens. Yeah. But first, let's have a look at some of Tandiswa's most incredible music. <laughs> Wow, Tandiswa, Hi. I finally get, actually get to interview you. Is Do this you know the first time that... Can I tell you, Bonnie has been on television forever yes. and she's never interviewed me. I've even right? interviewed you a couple of never times. Never interviewed this me. On you. I know, this is quite an epic moment. <laughs> yeah, but you just called me Tandweed Weezwa. Tandweed Weezwa. No, what did I, what did I call you Tandweed You said Tandweed Weezwa. I know, what? I just got a little excited. I said, what? It's because we had a moment in the change room earlier and... We had a wonderful moment. Yeah. And yeah. so I blushed. And yeah, okay, I don't know. okay, okay. <laughs> so we grew up in the same neighborhood. You grew up just around the corner from me. Yes. But where I first fell in love with you was uh, Jack with Jackknife. Yeah, um, that was like my first like foray into the music studio. And I'd never seen a music studio before. And I got there on that day and they explained to me what happens there. And I said, can I try? And what, what I did was turned out to be one of Kaito's like legendary hits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Amazing. And I mean, you just had that way about you, that I D A F, yeah, that look. Like you just don't the give up. The IDAF? Like What's you that? just don't I give don't up. I don't give up. Oh, <laughs> you did it in such a smooth, cool way. Do you know what? I think it's because you were my friend and you had that IDAF. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and then, and then Bongo Muffin. Yeah. Bongo Muffin recorded six award winning albums. I can't believe just, it. How did Bongo Muffin meet? How did you meet Stone when and I, Speedy? Well, I did um, the Shell Road to Fame. Like someone, one of my friends forced me to go into the Shell Road to Fame, and so I did. But then I didn't get very far in the competition. In fact, I didn't even get in through the first round. Wow, who were the judges? <laughs> it was, it was Don Laga now. and somebody else, <laughs> and <laughs> so, like three other people. And funny enough, after that, Don Laga called me and he said, you know what, you didn't make it, but I think there's something there. And he called me to his studio in, I think they were in Yeovil at the time. Are you kind of glad you didn't make it there? 
at that particular time? I don't know. I don't know because I never had a dream of being like a famous singing star. So what was your dream? I I don't know. Because this is, seems pretty much like where you were meant to be. I don't know. Be. I think that uh, growing up in like a township, you know, in like what was apartheid South Africa, it was very difficult for any child in the ghetto to have a dream because yeah. you just didn't know what was accessible to you, you know. So I didn't really have a dream. I just used to love singing and forcing my friends to watch me do it. Yeah. You know, so I think this was just kind of, this was destiny. Yeah, you know? yeah. It just and, called me. And then once your me. dream was materializing, how did you coin this aesthetic? An aesthetic that only Tandi Swamazwai owns and just keep reinventing it and just evolving it into something that we've never seen yeah, before. Yeah, like Cosa Sexy. Ooh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what? I, um, I lost my mother at a very young age, as you know. I was 16 years old when my mother died. And she was very much a traditionalist. She was a Pan-Africanist. She was a womanist. So all these things that she grew up like teaching me and talking to me about it, uh, when I was growing up, um, kind of started becoming way more important um, after she, she passed, you know. And um, she always spoke to me about this African aesthetic and how important it is for us to represent that because it's something that doesn't exist. Yeah. Because black beauty is kind of, um, it's viewed as, well, there, there, wasn't, there wasn't an idea of mm -hmm. black beauty, you know, yeah. when I was growing up. The idea was, how can you assimilate and look more like a white person so that you can be acceptable? And I knew that I didn't want to do that. I knew that I wanted no. to make other women of my kind to feel uh, that something, you know, something of theirs was accessible on television. Yeah. 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 And then Zabalaza went double platinum. Yes. What, what, what made it iconic for you? I have no idea what, why the, the album became iconic. I think that, you know, I always say that what I am is a conduit. I don't, uh, I'm not a genius. <laughs> or I'm not like smart with the music or I don't, I don't have a particularly important message. Yeah. But I do think that I'm a conduit. And so when the music comes, it comes because it needs to be sung and it'll choose me or whoever is listening. So I was just lucky enough to have been listening when a song like Nizala Ngobani came or a song like Zabalaza came, mm. you know what I mean? So I think it, the people kind of made it epic. You know, when I was making it, it was a very simple project. You know, I was like in my late twenties and I thought, let me make something, you yeah. know? So it was a very pure moment of creation, yeah. 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 Was now, definitely we, worked very well. But also the, the way you were discussing your mother earlier is exactly how I would describe yeah, you. Yeah, That's right? so beautiful. Yeah. Mm. And the other thing, um, I don't know if you guys know this about Tandiswa, but um, she demands that women throw bras at her. At her I don't shows. demand that they throw bras at me. <laughs> so when I flashed you earlier, it was well, quite okay, welcome. I'm used, to, I'm used to <laughs> what you, you were doing. She wanted to throw your bra at her. She wanted to throw she her wanted to crown you. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> but we're going to talk about that and why that's actually become a trend. A thing. Right? A thing, yeah. yeah. So remember that if you have any questions or comments for Tandi, so then tweet us or bras <laughs> at Afternoon Chat using our hashtag Afternoon Express. Comment on our Facebook post or call us now on 0839133728. <laughs> we are live. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be chatting more to her later on. I've actually got mine starting to come off. <laughs> well, after the break, off. we're getting cheesy in the kitchen. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Welcome back to Afternoon Express. So for those of you who love and watch the show all the time, you would know that my favorite place to be is the kitchen, even though I may not be very good at it. And so today, the wonderful Carrie Boucher Erasmus said to me, Jeannie, I'm your worst nightmare today. And that is <laughs> yes. because we are making something so delicious. So it's a savory scone, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what are we doing? So it's a little touch on scone and jam, but a savory version. So we're doing okay. um, spiral scones yeah. uh, with pesto and cheese in and then we're going to have a sun-dried tomato and bacon jam to serve with it. So Just, you need to say that again, sun-dried tomato and bacon, and bacon jam. jam. Yes. yes. And while you absorb that, I'm going to go get the butter. <laughs> I 
love it when we invite Carrie to the studio. Remember, you can cook with us. All you need to do is visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and this absolutely savoury splendour will be there for you. So, Great. we're going to, now that you've gotten your butter, yes. what have you thrown into this bowl? So it's got cake flour, salt, baking powder, a bit yeah. of mixed herbs, and this um, salati caster snow, which yeah. is like caster sugar, it's nice and fine, so exactly. it dissolves it's a lot nicely finer than the rest. into the mixture. Yes. And then we've got some butter, salted butter. Great. Just because it's savoury. Well, salted butter, is it, do you just put salt on your own butter? Is that what salted butter is, essentially? It's, yeah, it's just butter that's salted that you okay. buy. But <laughs> they, some baking recipes call for unsalted butter, but I honestly okay. don't see the reason. Let's put your hands in, yeah. So, what we're going to do now, <laughs> I'm putting you to work. We have what to, do you want me to do? we've got like three minutes. So we okay, gonna... okay. <laughs> okay, so this is what we call rubbing in. So we're rubbing the butter into the flour mixture until it forms almost like a damp sort of sand. So we've got to get all these lumps out. Okay, so I've got to get in there. Yeah, just said, but with your fingertips minutes. though, because if you go and start chucking our hands and our palms in, then you're going to make the butter hot, which is not going to make the scones very really nice. Oh, really? Why? Yeah, what does the heat of the hand do? It's like making pastry, really, scones. It's the same sort of ethos. So you've got to have cold Are you hands. you sure this is a recipe for a beginner? Totally. Look, you're doing it. You're fine. You're okay. coping. Absolutely. You know that you're only allowed to make sushi with really cold hands as well. Like, uh, generally, <laughs> only men are allowed to make sushi more than women. Because really? Because apparently That's women's hands fact. get warmer. Yeah than men's yeah. and you actually need colder hands yeah. to make sushi so maybe it's the same for scones because i don't know so how much therapeutic? fun i'm having right now no not really no. <laughs> i love it I'm a happy place okay let's just imagine. okay surely we've got a pre-mixed no, no, one let's... somewhere here no, I mean, yeah. this is tv yeah 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 no, there we go <laughs> <laughs> here's, a, here's a wet one okay okay just, just... Okay, so this is as fine as we can get it, but you could also do it in a food processor as well. Now you've got, I've actually We've put got a flower on your best face. equipment here. <laughs> no, we're doing it the artisanal way, okay? Okay, okay. Totally. This is, we're getting really messy today. Yeah. So we got buttermilk, some egg, okay. and some water. Okay. I'm just working really fast, guys, because I know the guys are looking at me like, oh, <laughs> So I'm like, no pressure. Yeah, you basically got a so, minute now, no pressure, okay. I'm telling you. <laughs> Okay, and, <laughs> and you can also, like I said, work it in a food processor until the mixture just comes together. Okay. So you don't, it's like pastry, so you don't want to over mix. Yeah. You get it in but there. you've got to mix it enough. Yes. Like, does it matter if all of that stuff hasn't touched the egg yet? No, you're just going to mix with a cold knife. I don't like using a wooden spoon because okay. you, once you. I don't know. I just, you know, I think it's a, cul <laughs> I think it's a culinary school habit. Okay. I said a culinary stool habit. <laughs> okay. You are amazing. I cake I flour. Kiss your cheeks. Cake flour. There you go. So, here we go. How much time do we have? Like 30 seconds. <laughs> no okay. pressure. So, <laughs> so, we're going to go. It's like a scondo. Yeah. And what you do is you flatten out, roll it out, and um, then you're going to spread uh, pesto on it and cheese. Um, and then you roll how it up How flat does this have to be? Let's see. Pretty flat. I mean, so, how good are we here? Yeah, we can. We like don't that? even have to. Look, it's... I don't know. I want to actually do it a bit more. But we'll see. Luckily, we have one for a backup. Okay. Now we're going to spread some pesto on. Stunning. Okay. You Let's get started that. with that. And then just layer it like a pizza base. Yeah, almost. yeah, yeah. Amazing! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to check on with this. Oh, yeah, and we've got the cheese. And then we're going to check on this a little <laughs> bit later to see how this oh, is going. Now, while we carry on with these gorgeous, delicious scones, Diners Club have been behind some fantastic winning opportunities for you, our viewers, in partnership with Afternoon Express. Now, from the day of pampering at a spa, I went to that, it was amazing, golfing lessons and an Italian experience. Now, our most recent lucky winners joined Bonnie to experience a rather unique way to see the morning in. Bonnie was here in the Bodefontaine Reserve to discover what Forbes magazine rates as a top 10 most unusual dining experience. Looking at our surrounds, who would guess that we're in the heart of bustling Johannesburg? This morning we're at the Valbon Country Estate for a unique experience in the City of Gold. And I'm joined by six winners of our Diners Club Dine in the Sky competition. And when I say our breakfast plans are up in the air, this is what I mean. It's like dining at the best table in the Eiffel Tower restaurant, except this table can go almost anywhere. We've seen that dining in the sky happens in many countries all over the world. How did it come to be in South Africa? The concept started 
in Belgium, all tables are manufactured there. This table here actually was the second one in the world. And currently there's 64 worldwide. Wow, that's absolutely incredible. And the excitement in the air is almost palpable. What is usually the reaction from the diners after the experience? People always walk away with a smile, right? They love the concept because it's a very unique concept. And it gives the people the amazing view of around Valbarn and with them actually enjoying the experience and interacting with other people, as well as the food that Valbarn actually um, prepares for our guests, which is very amazing. Is it safe? Do you want to throw out any disclaimers while we're at it? It's very safe. With a fully loaded table, um, it would weigh up to seven tons. And with the cranes that we use, it's actually, they're able to lift double that amount. And another thing is, I would both the table and the crane are checked and certified on a regular. So we don't want to take chances when it comes to skydiving. Three Afternoon Express viewers each won themselves and a partner the chance to enjoy a continental breakfast with a difference. I was watching an episode of Afternoon Express, saw the message come up, sent an SMS and wow, yeah, I am. Breakfast in the sky at 40 meters high. What an experience. Awesome, beautiful views, sunny morning, glorious day. It is so amazing and the view is gorgeous here at the back um, and just sitting up the I actually thought I'd be really, really nervous. But I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm not even feeling nervous. I didn't feel even nervous when we were starting. From a Diners Club brand, we've been traditionally associated with dining and entertainment. And we hope the, the contestants today that won the prize together with the partners are enjoying this breakfast. And from my perspective also, um, it's a thrill. You know, you're sitting high up in the sky enjoying breakfast on a beautiful day. It's something I've never done before. I've heard people talk about it and yeah, it's, it's an experience and a half. It takes a while to come back down to earth. Wow, now that we're back on the ground, I actually haven't noticed. I still feel like I'm floating up there. Beautiful experience, I, words cannot really explain it. Lovely crowd of people, um, awesome experience getting to meet Bonnie having breakfast with her, just, just a lovely morning, lovely day. I actually have a phobia of heights, I'm, I'm scared of heights, but then just going up there it was easy, it was, it was fun, it was nice, I actually forgot I have it, so maybe I don't anymore. The breakfast was great, it was superb, and met new people, uh, so it, 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 it was just a memorable experience, loved it. For one-of-a-kind moments or everyday convenience, the Diners Club credit card offers flexible repayments and a Club Miles rewards program. It was unbelievable, really. We, I really enjoyed it. Um, I think he was he was quite nervous to start with. So I got just like, don't turn, don't turn. Um, but it was really, the view is amazing. The weather was perfect. I think we had a perfect day for it. Um, and I just really, it was a great experience. And, and you know, stuff around Joburg. Like, I'm, I'm all about finding the experiences in Joburg. The weather and the view is so good and the food was great and just the whole experience. So, yeah, I'd recommend it to everybody, really. It was really, really great, awesome. This was a VIP intro to Diners Club holders' access to airport lounges across the five continents, plus concierge services, partner offers, and global privileges. Dylan, if viewers would love to be part of experiences like this, what should they do? From a Diners Club perspective, we've made things a little easier for all our new customers. What we've done is we've made an application available on our, our website. By simply going onto our website, you'll be able to fill in a couple of your own personal details and you'll receive an, uh, an instant decision. By that we mean you'll get an answer whether you qualify or not. Why is Diners Club proud to be associated with experiences like these? Diners Club has always been associated with travel and, you know, part of travel we've added dining and entertainment. And we'd also like our customers and our members to experience part of this. And it's as simple as just applying for the card. You know, we also associate with golfing, um, wine events. So it's also part of the experience that our members can enjoy. With Diners Club, I definitely associate a card that is very, I would say, elite. Um, they have so much benefits. It's, it's such an awesome program to be associated with. We ourselves are Diners Club members. Uh, you have, it's, it's a, such a good loyalty program. They offer so much. It's definitely something worth having. I associate Diners Club with 
fun, um, you know, uh, comfort, and I think all fine things in life. So it was actually a really, really great experience. I've actually been a client of Dana's for years, probably about six years now. Um, and great service always, but now I feel really spoiled by them, I must say. This is really awesome. It's a perfect lifestyle complement with travel benefits, everyday convenience and the Club Miles Rewards program. So after my most unusual dining experience ever, here's to squeezing every thrill and adventure out of life. Thanks to Diners Club. Experience the world in a way less limited. Apply today at dinersclub.co.za. Wow, I don't know if there's very many things in the world that I appreciate quite like a champagne breakfast. It's quite special. It's quite <laughs> How up was in that? the sky. It's quite special. And you're up there I'm for, worried for about, about like an the, hour. The, the, the wee factor. Like, yeah, what if you need to go to the bathroom? Yeah, what do you bad. do? If you need the bathroom, too bad. Like, Pinch. just, yeah, do it. <gasps> Pinch it. <laughs> but it was absolutely beautiful, and the view from up there was incredible. I'd recommend anybody to do it. Yeah, that is quite an experience. Yeah, yeah. But how long are you up there for? I think about an hour. Okay, so yeah. it's fine. Look, it was enough for me to finish my bowl of muesli. It takes me ages to finish muesli because I yeah. was chewing like so for because, ages. So because, I mean, there's no waitresses up there. What, what's happening? Your food is already in front of you. Yeah, it's already in front yeah. of you. Yeah, but there's a, there's a little centre kitchen. A little galley. Yeah, a whatever. little, yeah. I don't know if I'd be able to sit still for such a long period of time yeah. after all of that delicious food and champagne. <laughs> <laughs> after the break, we'll be chatting more to Tandy Somazwai. And if you're a huge fan like we are, we have a very special giveaway to announce as well. So don't go away. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We are live on the couch with Tandiswa Mazwai. And of course, we are live. So we are taking your calls on 0839133728 and your tweets on at Afternoon Chat and of course, your Facebook comments and whatever you want to say to our fantastic guests. But before we go any, for, uh, any further, I want to ask you a question. Do you recognize this little girl? <laughs> Oh, that's my daughter. And her puppy, Lucky. How gorgeous is she? <laughs> lucky. More like Lucky. D yeah, it's you Lucky. Some call her Lucky. Call him it's Lucky. Not lucky. It's, it's actually Lucky. lucky. Spelled L A K H I. <laughs> lucky. So cute. that little girl is 16 now. Wow, tell no, us about you your relationship with her. Do you know what? She's, I, I enjoy her now that she's older because we can do so many things together. Yeah. But she is going through. Being 16 a it's she's sixteen. It's called the second coming of the terrible twos. It's like oh, really? the other terrible twos. So, but that's I can what imagine you're quite a cool mom, though. She is. She's super cool. I am. A lot of her friends say to me, "I'm a lit mom." They're like, "You are such a lit mom." <laughs> are you lit? Our mom's lit now. Listen, I can't, I'm. I can't keep up with the millennials. You're almost going to be a lit mom. Almost. <laughs> I'm a tiger. Except I'm a tiger mom. Well, I don't know. Somehow I'm lit. <laughs> You, you know. are lit. We've got a caller on the line, right? Hello, Get. Uh, hello, and how are you? Good, how are you? Welcome to I'm Afternoon fine. Express. Uh, thank you very much. I'm Get Banjo. I'm phoning from Esikaleni in Guazulu Natal. That is research Bay for you, because oh. I know you don't know where uh, Esikaleni is. <laughs> Eskalen Yes. Uh, mm. Can I ask Tandega a question? Tandega, can yeah. you tell Tandi, so sorry, sorry to, to <laughs> say your name wrongly because I, you were... See, I thought it was just me. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, uh, Tandi, so yeah. I even named my granddaughter Tandi. So. Wow. You're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. But Tandi, so tell me, why are you so beautiful? You're even be more beautiful than your younger sisters. <laughs> and now, you even... <laughs> Richard, you're claiming your age, your younger age stages now. You are no, you are going nowhere to the age you are now. Yes. Can you tell me what is it that you are doing correct so that I, as Makoko, can also do it? Oh. <laughs> you know what I think? She's I think lit. it's like I really don't want to be old. Yeah. You know, like the main thing I want, I just want to stay young. So I don't see myself as like. Getting older, I just see myself as having more opportunities to enjoy my life. Yeah. So. And what a life you've had. I mean, yeah. if you have to reflect on some of the moments. When you were a little girl, did you ever think, you know, when I grow up, I'm going to sit at a table and I'm going to dine with Michael Jackson, Nelson Mandela? Yeah. <laughs> Do you I know mean, what? You had Seriously. a personal dinner with them. I did have dinner with Nelson Mandela and Michael Jackson. At the same time. At the same time. time. And actually what I happened mean, was... 
we were invited to Nelson Mandela's house for his birthday, and they said it's a private lunch. Yeah. So, you know, uh, it's very, very small. So we got there, and the table was, you know, about 12 people, not a lot of people. And, oh, you know, wow. um, uh, somebody came to, like, give us, you know, place us on the table. Yeah. So they placed that uh, at the top of the table, and to his immediate left is me, and to my left was Michael Jackson. <gasps> so I was like, seriously, just this like... Was a I was a little sandwich. You were sandwiched wow. by Michael sandwiched. Jackson and Madonna. But I used to, you know, as a kid, I used to do this thing where I would give speeches at the yeah. Grammys and thank Michael Jackson, my friend. So <laughs> I guess I called it. I did call yes. that. Yeah. Well, that's so, that's so messed up because I remember sitting with you watching um, Halle Berry give a speech, her Oscar speech, yeah. and I started crying and you were like, why are you crying? <laughs> Why do you cry? <laughs> you were being so weird. I was like, because she's an actress, I'm an actress, she's winning an Oscar, and you were like, stop crying. <laughs> I can't believe you pretended you know, to I give think, speeches. I think, that I, I think that I bullied Bonnie quite a lot. Eh? Yes, you did. Yeah, I'm You're sorry, my friend. friend. You're a I, need a, friend. I think I'm going to have to apologize. <laughs> now, I want to know all about when you performed at Radio Hall, Radio City Hall in New York. What I do mean, you want to know? I mean, how epic was that? Was that one of your pinch yourself moments? It was, because standing backstage, you know, there's Stevie Wonder, there's oh. Queen Latifah, there's uh, a lot of names, Baba yeah. Mal, you know, a lot of them, Anjali Kijo. Incredible. But, like, I love, I love going into these spaces where people expect you to behave a certain way, and then yeah. you bump into these other African musicians. Like... Anjali Kijo refused to do the red carpet. Like, we were all refusing to do the red carpet. <laughs> no, you're joking. And then Anjali Kijo... You tell the best Anjali, Anjali Kijo, Kijo story. was like, I don't care. I go like this. <laughs> if, they, if they want me to go on the, on the red carpet, I go like this. <laughs> and she was just wearing whatever. She's like, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a celebrity, I'm a singer. I'm yeah. going to go on that red carpet, you know? <laughs> and it was like, it's just hilarious because you see how there's all the frivolous stuff that happens, but then there's the real life person, you yeah. know, so I enjoy, I love Anjali Kijo, wow. she's so funny. <laughs> I mean, I've seen Anjali Kijo do crazy things to crazy, like to, like she did a crazy thing to Beyonce. Yeah. What did she do? Uh, I have to hear. <laughs> Why do? am I telling like people? Tell us. Tell us. No, 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 no. I forgot the no, television. Tell us. <laughs> I am not telling you this. Why? <laughs> you don't. You, you can't stop now. You can't start and then be like, oh, okay. So what did she do? So to I had this wonderful experience of of going to Robben Island yeah. with Nelson Mandela, and yeah. he was basically our tour guide. And Bono was there, and Beyonce was there, and Anjali Kidjo. <laughs> it was crazy, you know, and like. Oprah and just crazy group of people. So when we arrive on the island, um, Anjali Kidra keeps dragging Beyonce and saying to her, don't worry, don't worry, you're in Africa now, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so um, you know, some kids run up to get a picture of Beyonce and, and Anjali goes, yeah, take the babies, take the babies, don't worry, this is Africa, you take the babies. <laughs> And oh, then, she says, then she says, then she says, she says to Beyonce, "Yeah, in Africa we sit on the floor. When we eating, we sit. Sit down, sit down, sit down." <laughs> Did she sit? Beyonce is there going, "Oh snap!" <laughs> so I'm sitting down because she was outside of her own comfort zone and exactly. she couldn't really do much, you know. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, you know I'm what? laughing so hard. I've, 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 you've been a dear friend to me, and you've been so special to me my whole life, and you're just an all-round amazing person. So I have a gift for you. <laughs> Is this your bra, Bonnie? Yeah. Bonnie, I've always wanted your bra. <laughs> it's so a little nice nice for you. <laughs> today, today we're giving away a hamper containing Tandy Soma's eyes, two solo albums, Zabalaza and Ipokwe, as well as her live DVD, Dance of the For Forgotten Free. Simply SMS the keyword, express your name and city to 33728 right now to stand a chance. SMSs cost 1 Rand 50, T's and C's apply, and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. Today's love moment in the Revlon Color State campaign is all about finding love. <laughs> SA beauty blogger Luzanne Ashby reveals how you know when you've met your love match. <laughs> I've met my love match. I love I think you know you've met your love match when, first of all, you can just feel it in your heart that you've met the one. Um, I think it's also important that you feel loved, supported and um, 
secure with that person. You can be yourself. You don't have to hide anything. You can show them the good, the bad, the morning breath, everything. It doesn't matter. I think it's also important that both people have the same life goals and that you speak about that. Do you want children at the end of the day or do you want to have a house by the beach and just have fur babies? I also feel like um, when you feel like you are the luckiest person on earth to have that person in your life, that is definitely your love match. Lizanne and the rest of the fabulous Revlon Love Squad will be sharing their love tips and makeup tricks right here on Afternoon Express every Tuesday and Thursday. So sit in a reminder and tune in. Now for more of a beauty fix, follow the campaign online at hashtag Love Squad SA, love is on. After the break, it's time for Win a Home on Afternoon Express. So stay right where you are. Follow three talented young designers as they transform three empty apartments on Valdivia Estate into dream homes using finishes provided by Caesarstone and Plascon. Cast your vote on privateproperty.co.za and stand a chance to win one of the completed apartments worth more than 3 million rand. Welcome back, great to have you back. The kitchen can be a very technical room in the house to build and with less than a week left till our design contestants have to present their final kitchens, will they get everything done in time? Danilo is at Val de to see how far they've come. As you know, one of my favorite places to be in the Afternoon Express loft is the kitchen. So this must be my favorite challenge thus far. Our contestants are halfway through building their kitchens and it's time for us to catch up with them at the Val de estate. Okay, Danilo, I know there's not much happening here, but don't stress. Um, it's a freestanding um, kitchen that's going to come in the day before installation. Okay, yeah. so even though it's halfway, I would have expected more to have happened. Well, we had to make some changes on the design, and then obviously I need to make um, changes for the appliances that we're going to put in. So everything just had to move a bit, so you can see they're still busy. So you've moved some of the plugs around. I see you've started to at least think about colours. Um, colours, yeah, the colours are on the wall over there. We are going to do paint on the ceiling. The other colours are a surprise, but there won't be much painting here because we're filling all the walls. I'm a visual learner and we've spoken quite a lot about concept, but can I maybe see some of those ideas that you've got? What we have here is a freestanding kitchen that will just be put in the day before. We have a movable island. We can adjust it as people sit around it and things change and people change. Previous comments from the judges were that I'm a bit too masculine. This design will, will try and balance it out with all the styling that I'm going to include. Do we have smeg appliances? What do you think about the black? Yes, I think it's awesome. That black is like really, yeah. really, but again, masculine. Yeah, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and balance it as much as okay, possible. Cool. And I really considered adding value to this space. So on the back wall, we are going to have a peg wall that is adjustable as your lifestyle changes. And I've also included some full slabs of Caesar Stone this time to impress Trevor from Caesar Stone. And I hope he likes it. Sure. Some great concepts you've got here, but the all-important question, will you be done in time? Of course I will. I'll just have to push myself. Good. Get it all done. All right, well, good luck. I hope Thank it goes well. You. Okay, Danilo. Next up, be Nantle. Let's see what he's got cooking. Be Nantle, what's up? I don't know how to, uh, what are we going to do? Can you just pick that up for me? I'm just trying to decide. Oh, being put to work. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> maybe can, put it aside? Yeah, I'm trying to decide which towel to use. Or maybe I should use both of them and create some sort of pattern. On this wall? Yeah, because I have this transition that's happening here where the timber meets the towel. Oh, cool. So I'm trying to carry on the same concept on the wall. Okay, so I must ask you how the whole thing is going. I have three things that I really like about my kitchen, which is one of them is where we're standing. Yeah. So this is where the, um, the floor finishes meet, from the, from the timber that I'm using for the rest of the apartments Ooh. to the kitchen tiles. So when you walk through the passage, the, the floor sort of signals uh, a space, which is the kitchen, then you transition onto the rest of the spaces. You mentioned one of the three things that you like the most. What are the other two? Uh, the other two is the, the color I'm bringing into the kitchen, mm. which is a, a city green, a uh, bubble glow, very good for your kitchen. It's a lighter green compared to the other colours that I've been using because the kitchen, it's very risky when you bring in colour. And what's number three? 
Number three is how I'm sheeting the, the cupboards. Um, there's this play that I'm having with enclosed storage and exposed storage. And the exposed storage is where I'm planning to give the kitchen some life with the decorating elements, so you have to wait for that. Ooh. Which is what I'm, I'm thinking is gonna make my kitchen come together. I really like some of your ideas, uh, but the big question is, are you gonna be done on time? Because I really wanna see you finish this project. It sounds great. I think everything is on track. I had a meeting with Sang and Galo, uh, who, who came to South. Then we discussed all my ideas, and they seem to be in sync with my concepts, so that I'm happy about. And they liaising with one design, my kitchen guys, so that minimizes any mistakes that might happen on site. So overall, what's left is for the cupboards to come in, and then the scissor stone tops can come in afterwards. Well, your ideas are figuratively and literally cooking. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the final product looks like. You've got a week to go, holding thumbs, holding toes. Let's get this finished. Before you go, can you just assist me make a decision on the task? Oh, I'm being put to work. Well, the, this, that, this one, I guess. Well, I'll leave it over to you. Well, that wasn't much of a help, <laughs> but thanks anyway. Good luck. <laughs> All right, let's do like the tomatoes and catch up with Ronay's kitchen. Wait, kitchen's that way. Good afternoon, South Africa, and welcome to Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Today in the Valdivie Polo Pad Kitchen, we have Joanne cooking up something delicious. Well, more like <laughs> finishing off the final touches. What are you making for us today, Joanne? So I'm cooking up some dark joinery and unfinished kitchen, but... <laughs> 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 Talk me through the realness of this kitchen. I'm glad to see some stuff happening. What's one week to go? So all of my other spaces are very understated and calm. So the kitchen is going to be a safe and peace in my apartment. When you enter it, you'll immediately see it. And I'm hoping that that will bring some sophistication to the space. Talk us through those final touches. I just need to add my white Caesar stone countertop with the complementing feature wall right behind me. And then I have my beautiful white uh, snake appliances that will match perfectly with the white countertop. And then I still need to put on the doors on all the cabinets. I'm going to have my copper coffee station right here. And then I need to paint in the corner. And then I'll be done. Well, Chef Joanne, it is all sounding so delicious and fabulous. If you want to find the recipe or to vote for your favorite design contestant, go to privateproperty.co.za now and you can win one of the three apartments right here on Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Now make sure you tune in on Friday at our new time slot of 5 p.m. when we reveal what the final kitchens look like. One of the most exciting elements of Winner Home is actually watching our design contestants take an empty space and then turn it into something really beautiful. Now if you're looking to build your own home but don't even know how to start financing it, Bonnie is with Just The Man. Building a new home can be the most rewarding experience for anyone. You're able to customize your own taste and style. This can be an exciting project as you're able to design your own house and add design elements that are specific to you instead of acquiring someone else's taste, which comes with buying an already existing home. The big question is the financing side of building. How do banks finance someone who's looking to build? We are joined by Tim Akinusi, Head of Sales and Client Management at NetBank Home Loans. Welcome back, Tim. Lovely to have you with us again. Thank you very much. So building your own home sounds like such a daunting experience, especially the finance side of it for most people. How do banks finance somebody who's choosing to build a home instead of buying an existing one? Well, Bonnie, uh, the good news is that we do finance um, homes that are being built from scratch. So if you're in, in the market and looking to build your own place, what we do is we offer a building loan package in which uh, comprised of two components. So one would be the finance of the land, as well as the top structure. So um, this is a little bit different to when you are applying for a bond for an existing place. It's a little bit much more involved. So you would still need to have your affordability, you would still need to have a deposit, but go a little bit further beyond that and actually find the land, find an architect, and find a reputable builder that can help you build this place. I think for me, the building process is quite a journey. It is Sounds a like labor it. of love. It is heavily involved. And um, you need to really make sure that you're up for it because there's quite a long um, process involved in it. And what customers need to understand is part of this whole process is that we will walk with you as a bank to make sure that we evaluate the house at each phase as well as provide you with funding. Um, to continue the build as you go along. Yeah, and are there specific conditions or requirements that the bank needs from an individual who's deciding to go for a building loan instead? Well, certainly, what we would require from you is, along with um, your application, 
would require for you to have found um, an architect, have a plan. Uh, it doesn't have to be an approved plan. It could be a draft plan for what you're looking to build. You'd also have to have a registered builder, somebody who's registered with the NHBRC. You'd have to have an engineer um, who would make sure that the structural integrity of the house um, is going to be in place, as well as a building contract. So you'd need to contract with your builder, agree costs on specific items, and have that signed. And with that in place, uh, we can then proceed to um, fund you as, as you go along yeah. through the building process. I mean, it sounds like there's so much to consider. Any other advice you have for people deciding to build their own homes? The first advice I would um, give to people looking to build is make sure you have the right amount of commitment and time. Uh, like I said, it's not a, uh, a three-week process or three-month process. In most cases, it could be as much as um, a year to 18 months. So you would need to make sure that you understand exactly what you want um, and also be decisive in terms of how you make decisions about key aspects of what you want to build, etc. Yeah. Because if you are not, you end up going through a process where there's a lot of wastage of time, material, and those things could very quickly escalate. And the last thing you want is to find yourself with a building project that you've run out of funding for, yeah, yeah. which is one of the common mistakes that people actually make. So I would suggest that um, finding the right arch architect would be the, the appropriate thing because he'll be able to design a place for you that is functional, a place that um, incorporates a lot of uh, green and, and sustainable living type um, features in, into it. And those are key things that you want for any place. Yeah. Um, along with that, you just need to make sure that you have the right time and dedication towards the project. And the end result should be something that would enhance the value of the place um, once you follow those, those steps. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The value of the place should be a, um, a good one in future. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you also need nerves of steel. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, you, you absolutely will go through some difficult periods yeah. where you feel like um, you're not going to make it. You just can't see this thing being done. Yeah. But you really just need to stick to your budget, stick to the plan, be involved, uh, make sure that your architect and your builder and yourself uh, commit to specific deadlines and specific um, requirements and you should be fine. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us again. It's a pleasure. So if you'd like to know more about how NetBank can help you with financing a new home, simply visit netbank.co.za forward slash home loans. When I was young, I always wanted to be a Bond girl, but I ended up being a girl with a Bond. So that was some really good advice. Now, remember that you at home are also a judge on Win a Home, and you have the chance to change one of our design contestants' lives forever by simply voting for your favourite kitchen now. And if you are our grand prize winner, then you get to choose which of their apartments you want, and it becomes yours. Vote for your favorite design contestant's kitchen on privateproperty.co.za and stand a chance of winning a tulip dining chair by guideline to the value of 6,890 Rand. You also automatically get entered into the draw to win one of the three finished apartments valued at over 3 million Rand. Win a Home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, the whole day I've been thinking that having a Tandiswa on the show was going to be the highlight. And then I found this. And Carrie's going to teach me how to make it. It's tomato, bacon... Sango, tomato and bacon jam. Jam. Yeah. Can I taste it? Yes, no. you can. While well, you're charming that, um, there's been bacon frying here, just streaky bacon chopped up. And then all you do is add some hydrated sun-dried tomatoes. In it goes. All I need is that in toast, and I'll be happy for the rest yeah. of my it's life. Quite tart. There's mm. a, quite a bit of this is um, demerara sugar that we've added in here, okay. but you'd be surprised it's not that sweet with, with sweet the tartness all, of the sun-dried tomatoes. It's quite yeah. cool. Then you add the sugar, and then you add quite a bit of stock. And this stock we actually soak the sun-dried tomatoes in. Oh really? So um, just to soften it a bit. What's um, this stuff? Can and that's some, that um, yes, thank you for reminding me. Um, and that's some um, dry thyme. Lovely. And then you can see it's quite a bit of liquid. 
in there. So all you have to do is just um, bring it to the boil, yeah. then turn the heat down a bit and then simmer until it reduces to that consistency. And then this is what we yes. are left with. So basically we can just break apart our scones, add a bit of jam and then that's it. And that's it. You could always add some more grated cheese to it, some sour cream would be lovely as well. So it could be a real savoury fest. I love you. <laughs> Thank you for giving me this joy. My tongue is going to totally have a little party I'm now. I'm going to wash you while I eat one. Oh, yeah, I know okay. you are. I'm going to wash you. <laughs> Remember, you two can make this absolute joy. Now, this makes me happy. And all you need to do is visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and all of the details will be there. I definitely think our guests will need I'm a mouthful you. of this. Tandiswa. I tell you what, you can have some of this, but all of our audience members want to know when you are releasing your new album. Yeah, and you, you, you <laughs> do have a bun that in the is, oven, right? That is the million seat. dollar question. Just, is that, yes, that's that, the million dollar question. That, that, that <laughs> is the million dollar question. <laughs> you are cooking up something though, tell us. I am, I'm actually making like three or four albums. So what? I've just, yeah, 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 because I'm bad like that, you know what I mean? I'm bad like that. That's awesome. So I, I just finished a jazz album. So and the show is unfortunately, we've, we've got time up. So now we've got to eat Let's and say eat. goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll be back again tomorrow. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> oh, and I want to know more about you. It's album. fine. I'll tweet it. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we discuss the stigmas surrounding mental illness in South Africa. And we also chat to artist Tsoku Maela, who created a collection of artworks depicting his struggle with depression. The hottest address on TV is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Another feel-good production.